Let's get talking now. Lack of proper business environment in Nigeria has been a major issue for entrepreneurship uh, promotion, of course, in the nation. Most especially lack of necessary infrastructures and insecurity challenges, mostly in the northern Nigeria. Despite all these challenges, some northern female entrepreneurs continue to defy these challenges and continue to succeed in their businesses. Additionally, cultural and regional sentiments affect female entrepreneurship in the same region. Well, let's get talking and to join me, joining me live via Zoom to do this from Gombe uh, is the founder and creative director of uh, Timabi Incorporated. She's also the winner of the Forbes Under uh, 30 Day and being joined by Fatima Mabakura. Thank you so much uh, for your time. It's good to have you join us on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Tomo. Ah, uh, yes, let's get talking. First, uh, let me congratulate you. Well, I hope it's not too late. Uh, <laughs> but how did you? How did it all start? Give us a brief uh, story. Uh, I've seen a lot. I've read a lot about you. But just tell us a little bit, a uh, summary of how this, uh, how it all began uh, for you to now become this success story. Well, to be honest, I've always just loved doing the things that I enjoy doing, right? Um, I started my business, you know, it's it, when I tell the story of my business, I basically tell people that it's a story of a hobby that became a business. So I started, I would say, you know, as a hobby around 2014, and then it became a proper business around 2017. And, you know, the reason why there's two different times for when it started is obviously it, it was a hobby in 2014 because, you know, I was just doing it because I enjoyed it, not really looking to make money off of it. And then 2017, I really saw the potential and decided, OK, this is going to be a business. Um, so, you know, I've always just loved designing handbags, clothing, whatever it was, like some somehow somewhere there. I've always just, you know, loved the idea of being a creative um, you know, especially when it comes to the fashion sector. And so, you know, I'd sketch things. And um, I think in 2014, what had happened was I sketched a handbag and I became very curious to see what it would look like in reality. And so, you know, just like any other curious person, I, I set out to find how I was going to make this a reality. You know, a simple Google search, try to find a manufacturer who was going to do it um, because, you know, at the time I was in school, so I was in school in Canada. And so, you know, I tried to find a manufacturer online that I didn't really have to, you know, be present, you know, where they would manufacture. And then, you know, that, that was just the beginning for me. You know, they made the handbag. I, I kind of liked it. And I decided, you know, I'll just make handbags for myself all the time. And then, you know, some people would love it and they would buy it off me. And then, you know, I just saw the potential of it at, in 2017 when, you know, people really, really started to order a lot from me. And, yeah, that's how it started, really. Interesting stuff there. Uh, you were an accounting student, right? Uh, yes, sir, I, I want to ask. Know. Yeah, I want to ask you, with no background uh, in fashion, like you said, uh, what do you think about mentorship? Because I, I'm thinking around that space that uh, you just did all of this on your own. Uh, moving on, do you think that young ladies like you that want to take a cue from you, how do you think they should go about this? So the way I see things, right, and it's the way I really get to do things is there's no limit to what you can achieve if you really put your mind to. I know this sounds very cliche, but it's the truth, right? I have a background in, you know, I, I went to school for commerce, majored in accounting absolutely no background in you know fashion or whatever the business of fashion is but I learned on the job you know I'd ma I made a whole lot of mistakes which is why I'm passionate about mentorship you know I did a lot of research I asked a lot of questions I, and for the times I never asked questions I really did see the consequences right because I made a lot of mistakes costly mistakes you know mistakes that I could have avoided if I'd asked the right questions if I'd actually you know reached out to seek mentorship and it's why mentorship for me I think is the big it's 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 a foundation for people who are starting out who have no experience in doing things um you know that they actually want to do just because you know you don't have the skills to do something doesn't mean you really can't get into it you can get into it learn on the job and really really excel and do good at it and obviously see like pay it forward right so I, I'm very passionate about mentorship because that's something that I didn't seek out like early on 
And, you know, do I regret not doing that? Absolutely not, because now that I think about it, you know, it was meant to teach me a lesson. And, you know, I think it's the, you know, it's one of the reasons why mentorship is at the core of my purpose as a person. And uh, small businesses like yours face challenges in this part of the world, and we must agree to that fact. Uh, sometime early last week, I think uh, early this week, was the World MSME Day. Uh, we discussed a lot about that too. So tell us about these challenges and uh, how you were able to surmount some of them and how do you think uh, others can move on despite these challenges? Finance, ah. You can go on and on. Yeah, of course. So, you know, the challenges that we face in Nigeria is very unique to here because, you know, in 2022, right, I mean, you think about not having constant electricity. It's it's not something that people, you know, in other countries really speak about, but, you know, it's something that we face on a daily. And, you know, with the way the world has changed, you know, with technology, a lot of the tech machines or like products that we use require electricity. How do you begin to innovate and become creative when you have no access to these things? And, you know, if you decide to go the other way and, you know, okay, I'm going to power my generator, it becomes really costly. And, you know, those were the things that you know led me to moving my you know my production out of the country because I you know at some point I I, I did production in Kano. This, is this was around to here, Cindy headquarters in the heart of Nairobi, Kenya. So in 2015, you know, I tried to produce here. But because, you know, we have a lot of problems, electricity was becoming more costly for me to produce in Nigeria when I compared it to, you know, like producing outside of Nigeria, because, you know, I would spend so much on gas, I would spend so much on, you know, making sure that I'm training workers who don't have enough skills. Um, and again, it's because they don't have access to, you know, the, the um, what is it called, the, the tech that they need to to make sure that products are done you know at global standards you know we can't power those machines here because you know we don't have access to power that's just one of it and then when we speak about funding right i think just not until recently i don't think funding was you know accessible to you know fashion designing or even anyone in the creative space and even now that it is is it really really accessible or do you have to cut corners to get access to it you know these are questions that people really need to look into um, but yes, how did I overcome it? You know, we move, we're Nigerians, you know, that's how we look, that's how I see it. If you truly want to do something, you'd find ways. Um, yeah. So it's very important for you to like, just be very creative with the way that you see things. I know a particular handbag designer in Nigeria who, you know, because she couldn't really find the right skills, um, you know, in terms of artisans to do a particular stitch. And, you know, she didn't really want to be spending a lot of money importing machines and working working with them. She decided, I'm not going to make bags that have stitches. I'll just have bags that, you know, use a particular kind of adhesive just to make it work. And, you know, it turned out really great. So I think thinking outside the box is something that we really, really need to do as Africans and particularly as Nigerians. Hmm. Uh, just like I, 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 I can read out here, like, you are not just that average uh, northern uh, lady. Because we, we know northern ladies most times to be conservative. Many of them do a lot of stuff, but they don't really come out uh, to speak about it. Or people don't really know uh, about what they do. What's that thing? What's prompting you? What's that thing that is making you... you know, we hear about you and everybody's talking about you. So what's that thing that makes you stand out, that makes you different? So the reason why I've decided, you know, I'm also a very shy person and culturally, like, you know, I would want to just do things, stay low key, move on, you know, if recognition comes with it, fine, if it doesn't, it's okay, I'm just doing the work, right? But I realize now more than ever that we need to be the ones to tell our stories, right? Because when you think about female entrepreneurship and you think about it in Nigeria, the picture that comes to mind you know, the first picture that comes to your mind is not a picture of a Northern Nigerian lady, unfortunately. And it's not because, you know, we're not creative or we're not great business women. We are just like any other, you know, group of women in the world. The only difference is that they have decided to tell their stories and, you know, we haven't. And it's, you know, we, it could be for cultural reasons. It could be for whatever reasons. But that has to change because what happens when you don't tell your own story is other people would tell it for you 
And, you know, most times they don't tell it accurately, but you can't blame them because you haven't, you know, said your, you haven't told your story. And, you know, it's very important for us to tell our stories because, you know, it has a domino effect. You know, I'll tell you from, from the Forbes 30 on the had you know not just women reach out to me i've had men reach out to me because okay they've seen a northern nigerian woman do it it's you beating all the odds and now they feel like i can also do it if a woman from northern nigeria has done it like why can't i as a man do it and you know so when you think about it it does have a great effect it's for the greater good of the nation because when you think about collaboration especially in the creative space you don't see a lot of collaborations with the northern Nigerian people. And it's because, you know, the picture that comes to mind is maybe we're not that creative. Maybe we can't get the job done, but you don't blame the people who think like that because the only way you'd invite people to even learn about your story is if you allow them. And how do you allow them? It's for you to tell that story, right? Mm. Interesting stuff. Now, now you'll be thinking about I'm mentoring the young ones. I'm just asking. I don't know. What are you thinking along that line uh, so that you can, you know, help more to spread this positive message? Yeah. So for me, I'll tell you, you know, one of the things that, so I grew up in Lagos. And one of the reasons why I think I turned out the way that I turned out is, you know, right from school, you know, catch them young. You know, I'm very passionate about young girls because, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I've gone on to, you know, just be fearless in my pursuit of whatever it is I want to do is the fact that we had career days in high school, right? And one, I think one of the days we had someone come in and speak to us about entrepreneurship and just, you know, just, you know, motivating you and telling you that there's actually no limit to what you can achieve, you know, regardless of your gender. And, you know, that stuck with me. It was a long time ago, but it's something that I think about on a daily. And I think, you know, for you to build women that are fearless, that, you know, don't feel like they have a limit that can achieve success, it starts from the mindset. You know, an average girl here would, you know, would not think that she, she can achieve a lot of things, especially in the business space, because, you know, society has taught her to think that way. But when we start to work on the mindset, they realize that it's achievable, it's achievable, it's attainable. They see people like me on the cover of Forbes and they realize it's not that hard to do. You know, you reach out to them and explain to them that they just need to get the work done and ignore whatever society says. Um, I think that's why mentoring is very close to my heart. It's because, you know, for me, mindset is everything. And, you know, the, the best way to do it is to do it, you know, from a, from an early age, because, you know, fortunately for me, I was lucky to go to school in Lagos where, you know, th these were things that were said to me on a daily um, or very often. Mm. Uh, before I let you go, uh, I would like to know uh, where you see your business in, I would say, five years from now. Uh, what are you thinking? Where do you think you will be at, the, at that point? You know, I continue to build a global brand. And so in five wow. years, I, I, yeah, like that, that's just the hope for me, right? Like from the onset when I started Tima B, from my very first in interview, if you have access to it, you'd, you'd know that I was very specific. I wasn't building lo for just locals. I wasn't building for Africa alone. I was mm. building for the world. So I'd continue to do that work. But more than ever, what is very important for me right now is to make sure that I keep pushing the envelope for women entrepreneurship, especially um, women entrepreneurship, you know, in regards to Northern Nigeria. And it's because, you know, for a very long time, we've not told our story, but we need to start doing it. In five years, I hope to, you know, own my flagship store in Dubai. Reason is, you know, 80% of my customers are from that region, the UAE. And so it would be really nice to just have that. And it would be lovely because, you know, we would have a store that represents Nigeria, that represents Africa, and represents, you know, the Black people of the world um, and women. In All, right. All right. Well said. Uh, but just something came to my mind before I, I, I let you go. You talked about a global brand. And that takes me to thinking about standards, quality of what you produce. Yeah. That has been the worry. Many believe that... What we produce here many times don't meet standards. What's your reaction to issue of standards and, of course, meeting uh, that global demand? 
So I think, you know, for building any brand, communication is very important. What you communicate to your customers is very key, right? Um, the way that we, we have the regardless of what you think I am or what you think the brand is, we would never ever make products that are not a, a world standard because, you know, prior to starting this business, I've always been a consumer of luxury goods. You know, I would save up to buy a handbag, you know, that I thought was really good. And, you know, because I loved things like that, I knew I was never going to make anything so far. If anything, you'd be better, right? So, you know, you'd never buy anything from my brand for a reason for you could buy you could decide to not buy for any reason but it wouldn't be because it was poorly made right so i think as business owners as nigerian business owners we need to make sure that you know it's something that we really put into consideration when we start up from the very beginning be very sure what you're putting out you know make sure you pay attention to those details you know um don't just say you know you do it however like consistency is so important you're playing at world standard it doesn't matter you know where you are in the world it's you know the world has changed so much now the social media you could be in your corner in Ibadan and someone would discover you all the way in Paris so you know just make sure that you're doing things at the same level that the world is playing at you know don't limit yourself for whatever reason Fatima uh, Babakura, uh, they have been speaking to founder and creative director, uh, Timabi Incorporated. And uh, she's also the winner of Forbes Under 30. Thank you so much for joining us. I will keep a tab on you. I will definitely have you on the show anytime soon to talk uh, around, of course, businesses and how we can do better. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for having me.